We must speak on the intervention that is occurring in your world in light of the three requirements for freedom. First, you must see that intervention is part of nature. It is bound to occur. It is destined to happen. Anyone who has power in the universe must face the risk of intervention, competition and intrusion. Anyone who has gained an advantage in any way technological advantage or rare and valuable resources will have to face the problem of intervention and competition in the universe. It is a universal problem, and that again is why the wise remain hidden. That again is why humanity must learn to be extremely discreet. You are living in a world of tremendous natural diversity and biological resources. Those who are intervening in your world today are not interested in the resources that you hold most dear. They are interested in biological resources, particularly those resources that represent the building blocks of life genetic agents, chlorophyll, blood and plasma. These are the things that are valuable and are greatly needed in a universe full of barren worlds. Some of this represents illegal trade, trade that is not allowed for ethical reasons, but trade that exists nonetheless. Rare metals are also sought here metals that you are aware of and metals that you are not aware of. These things must be mined with human assistance. Anything that a foreign race seeks to do in this world must have significant human assistance. This is because of the biological barrier that this world presents to the universe and to those races who have evolved in sterile environments, who are not adapted to being biological terrestrial environments such as this. Because worlds such as this are very rare. There are very few races in the universe who have this adaptation. That is why the native races must be cultivated and genetically aligned with the intervening races. It is a time-consuming process, but the results are believed to be worth it by those who are engaging in such activities. The intervention is of two kinds. There are resource explorers, which nearly always represent one race operating with great freedom and impunity which are clients of larger powers. Sometimes, they are clients of independent trading networks that are engaged in illegal trade. Those resource explorers who have been in your world and who are in your world today represent members of this group. Then there are collectives, who are multiracial, hierarchical and very well organized. The worker classes are bred for specific purposes, and they are involved in collective breeding, which is a practice not all advanced races are engaged in. The collectives seek a more permanent residence in this world. They seek it as a world that either they or their clients could own and govern from afar with human assistance. That is why such great care has been taken to study human psychology, human physiology and your reproductive process, as well as the biological hazards that exist on Earth. That is one of the reasons that plant samples have been taken and the world has been observed for such a very long time. It is perhaps surprising for you to realize that an advanced technological race would have difficulty adapting to your world believing that their science and medical technology would have overcome the difficulties involved. But, alas, so great are these difficulties that there is no race who has evolved in sterile or near sterile environments that could easily withstand the biological agents that exist here. Even the illnesses of your animals could affect them. So great is this hazard that in recent history few races have attempted colonization of this world. But now the collectives see an advantage. For humanity has built networks that they can use worldwide communications, worldwide resource extraction and a sufficient level of technology that can, at a basic level, interface with what they use and rely upon. Humanity is also developing greater sources of destructive power, and should this power be fully cultivated, 
then interventions such as this kind would be more difficult to attempt. Lastly, there is the deterioration of your natural environment, which is threatening many of the very resources that the intervention seeks. That is why the intervention has gone into its mature phase in the last half century. An accelerated phase involving four fundamental activities. The attempt to persuade certain individuals in positions of power in government, commerce and religion, to establish a physical presence and familiarity within the world itself, to influence religious views and tendencies, which also includes the promotion of human conflict, and the program of hybridization to establish adapted beings in a human form who are allergent to the intervention and who can assume greater governing powers here in the world. These for interrelated programs represent the activities of the collective's resource explorers operate in a more simple manner, by taking things they need from the world as they are able to find them. But the collectives have a more complex and long-range plan in establishing power and influence within this world. They recognize the strengths and weaknesses of the human family in your tendency towards conflict. They recognize that to gain human allegiance which is their goal. They must present themselves as capable of assisting and even saving humanity from its own problems and from the great challenges that it now faces. The intervention will present itself therefore in a more enlightened form as spiritual agents. As those who have overcome war and conflict, who live in peace and who have achieved technology that humanity can now use and indeed now needs in order to rescue its environment and to bring a cessation of conflict in the world. Yet, this all represents deception. For the collectives actually seek to increase human conflict, to weaken the strongest worldly powers and to gain allegiance through human failure allegiance and a reliance upon their presence. Their interbreeding program is not only to establish individuals in positions of power, but also to condition and to program those that they take to become the interventions, representatives and apologists those who will promote the intervention and the peoples of the world having direct access to these intervening powers, bypassing their governments, bypassing human authority figures, in order to establish direct contact with those forces who are conditioning people to believe that the intervention is here on their behalf. It is a clever approach and well conceived. And so far it is progressing with very little human resistance. Even the governments of the world have been seduced in many ways. They have made contracts with the intervention which the intervention has violated. And now there are those within the governments of the world who are aware of the intervention and who support it. And there are those who are aware of it and who oppose it. So the seeds of conflict and opposition have even been sown within the corridors of power within your nation's governments. Many of them, the intervention is being carried out by physical beings who are driven by the same needs that drive humanity the need for resources, the need for power, the need for wealth and the need for strategic advantage. It is these very things that drive all nations in the universe. You must not regard these beings as evil or demonic or as angelic, they are beings driven by the same needs that drive humanity. It is important now that we address the question of how the intervention is functioning within the context of the three primary requirements that humanity must meet and must utilize in order to become a free race in the universe. The intervention does not value freedom. It is unknown amongst its participants. It will, therefore, seek to oppose or undermine any progress that humanity will attempt to make regarding these three fundamental requirements. Human unity will be opposed because a united human family will be very difficult to influence. Human conflict can be so easily antagonized, increased and directed.